Okay. All right, shall we get this meeting started? Mm. Well, let's do it. Oh, here, I better go to the right page for you. Um, just for the, the record, we have Meg McCombs, Michelle Phillips, Katie Nelson, Julia Lutke, Sonali Mukiha, and Sebastian Norback joining, and um, Aaron Summers will be joining us a little bit late. All right. So shall we start with minutes from last week? Or I mean last month? Does anybody have any changes or questions? Um, okay. Sorry. Oh, we also I'm have our new member, Jolene Olson, who has just joined as well. Okay, so uh, back to the minutes. Anyone have questions or would someone like to approve if the minutes look okay to everyone? Or I mean, make a motion to approve. Sorry, I've had COVID. I'm not in my right mind. <laughs> oh no, oh, I'm sorry, Michelle. <laughs> my only question was, I don't think I was at this meeting and I'm on members present. Mm. So, sorry about that, Meg. I guess you're just okay. omnipresent in my mind. <laughs> yeah, I think I was at my, my daughter's dance thing that night, so I missed okay. it. Okay, I'll change that. All right, so um, I will move approval with the correction that has been noted. Do we have a second? I can second. <laughs> Thanks, Meg. <laughs> all right, all in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Okay, so let's move on to our next item, which is the public arts master plan addendum. Abby, um, before we go on, do we want to just quickly um, say hello to our new member, Jolene? Oh, yes. Hi, hey, Jolene. Here, I'll stop Hello. sharing I, so you can see faces. Oh, I'm so sorry uh, for being late. <laughs> a kiddo needed a last minute ride. So, you know, I hope you know how that goes. <laughs> so anyway, apologies. Um, hi. Do you want to tell us about yourself? Oh, um, sure. Um, well, my name is Jolene Olson. Um, I have been in Middleton for the last five years, four, four or five, something like that. Um, and I've lived in the area um, my whole life. I grew up on a, well, almost my whole life. Um, I grew up on a dairy farm uh, west of here in, in Sauk City or Sauk Prairie. Um, and so um, I am not an artist, but I am, um, I am an engineer, a biomedical engineer. So not, not that useful uh, in terms of that, but I think that was one of the, the criteria um, for the committee. Um, I I am a um, music performer, though, and and so that that is that is my um, that is my artistic bend. Uh, piano, voice, a little a little of other little things here and there. Um, but yeah, um, let's see. So I work for a small company locally. Um, we do. Uh, I'm in. I'm product manager slash brand new web developer. So um, you know, I'm just sort of um, exploring. Uh, new career avenues at the same time as joining a new committee. So my head's a little bit like fractured because <laughs> uh, because this is all sort of, a, this is new developments within the last week or so um, where I've transitioned from my project manager role to a, a split focus uh, within my little company here. So um, I'm really excited to work with you all. I'm really like, I'm really a big fan of Middleton itself and um, what the community, you know, does. I love our small feel with sort of big budget, well, bigger than, normal budgets. Um, it's kind of nice. So um, yeah, I, I'm just really excited um, to join the group and, and, and get on board with some of these projects. So um, anyway, nice to meet y'all. Shall we introduce ourselves? Sure. Why don't you go and then tag somebody else? All right. Uh, my name is Michelle Phillips and I'm the chair of the committee and I am the editor of the Middleton newspaper. Meg, you want to go? Sure. My name is Meg McCombs and I'm a graphic designer and I've been on the committee for six, I think this is my sixth year. 
uh, Katie. <laughs> Hi, I'm I'm Katie Nelson. I am a member of the City Council for District Three, and I've been on this committee for I don't know four years, something like that. Um, Sebastian, you're up. Hello, uh, my name is Sebastian Norbeck. I uh, grew up in Middleton, uh, still legally live there. Um, I work for an arts organization and consultancy called CodaWorks, whose H headquarters is on Willie Street downtown. We help find artists who can do uh, big projects and site-specific installations, murals, sculptures, statues, fountains, on all over the place. But I'm, I'm the I think the second newest person on this committee now. So welcome. Uh, Aaron, why don't you go next? Hi, uh, Aaron Summers. I am one of the owners of Sketchworks Architecture, and then I'm also an oil painter on the side, things like that behind me. <laughs> um, I've been on the committee, arts committee for two years and bounced around to a couple other city committees like parks and strategic planning as well. Um, who do we still got? Julia? Hey, I'm Julia. Um, I've been on the art committee pretty recently. I just joined this past April. Um, and I'm a working artist. I do comic book art. And I'm originally from Wisconsin, but I've been living in Boston for about the past eight years. But I moved back to Wisconsin recently. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome back. Sonali, you're last but not least. Hello, I'm Sonali Mukija. Um, I joined Arts Committee about almost a year and a half ago. And um, I think last year's on September, so 2021, September, and we moved to Middleton in 2020. Um, so yeah, I'm fairly new to Madison, Wisconsin, Middleton, um, about four years in October. Um, and I'm a program manager by profession. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. All right. Well, welcome to our group. Now we shall go on to the master plan addendum. Yep. And again, I'm just keeping this on as a standing item. I don't expect any um, action or anything. It's just a nice thing to have handy in our packets as we our planning projects. Um, so I just am including it in the packet until you all tell me that we shouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does anybody have any comments or questions about the master plan? Um, just kind of to fill you in, we have a master plan that we work from and we have um, a list of projects and things that we want to achieve and it is part of the city's master plan. So uh, shall we then go on to funding? Since we, I don't think we have anything to talk about with the master plan. Nope. Um, so the only thing I had for funding options, I had at the last meeting, we had talked about going ahead and setting up a donor box account and getting it linked on our website. And I have to apologize that I have not had a chance to link that yet, um, but I will, um, keep working on that and I'll let you all know once we're ready to start accepting contributions so you can share it with your networks and then on half a percent for arts um, for the members who weren't in attendance at the last meeting and also for our new member um, the city council approved a half percent for arts initiative tied to TIF district number five and so beginning this year and reoccurring annually, we will have a budget item for a large capital project. It can't be like a temporary art project. It needs to be an installation that is expected to last 10 years or more. And the dollar amount um, for this year is we have $30,000. Um, and that project needs to take place within TIP District 5 um, so that we're following state statutes uh, for how tax increment financing dollars must be spent. 
Can you uh, remind us where that district is located? Yes. Yes. So um, I will pull up a map for you. And while <laughs> I'm doing that, um, TIF District 5 covers land that is between Parmenter Street west to the Beltline. Um, it also includes the Conservancy, the Pheasant Branch Conservancy Creek Corridor. Um, which I know has been an area where we've talked about possibly um, including some sort of artwork, which, you know, we would need to work with the Friends of Pheasant Branch and the Middleton Public Lands Department on. And then also um, the Northeast, kind of central part of the, the um, Northeast part of the city around Allen Boulevard and Century Avenue. And then also, um, we did extend the TIF district to include a small part of University Avenue also. So let me just pull that map up here. TIF district five, where are you? I'll pull it up on the TIF policy. Let's see if we can zoom in. Okay, can you all see this or do I need to stop share and reshare? Can you see the map? Um, yeah, I can see it. See it's it. good, yeah. Okay, okay. So <laughs> um, so yeah, I mentioned um, Parmenter Street. Uh, oh, for your, oh, go ahead. Abby, would you be able to do like a print preview? I'm not able to zoom it. Um, oh, okay. Uh, let me see if I can just make it bigger. Bigger. Let's see if this works. Okay, and then I'll just scroll. So um, are you all familiar with, with where the city's municipal operations center is, where we have the large Dama mural, the invisible work, yes. invisible earth? So that's this site here on the north edge of the city. And then heading south, um, this area that I'm circling, I hope you can see that, is the Tribeca development area. There are, there's a new senior housing project here and um, there's some workforce housing uh, being constructed here right now. Um, this area that is currently undeveloped is planned for um, Bell Farm neighborhood. So that might be a good um, location to consider because I think the developer who's building that as she builds it out, I think she'd be very supportive of including some public artwork in some of the spaces there and there will be a park. Um, and then the, pretty much the entirety of the Parmenter corridor, basically from the roundabout to, um, well, pretty much all the way north to the edge of the city. Um, just so you all know, um, we are going to be reconstructing Parmenter Street north of Century Avenue. Um, it was a project that was planned for this year. It looks like it's probably gonna take place next year. But there might be some opportunities, some really good opportunities there for artwork because right now that cross section of the street, it's very rural. It doesn't have sidewalks. It doesn't have a bike path, but we're adding a multi-use path on the east side of the street, pedestrian amenities on the west side. And we're also gonna have a 20 foot wide, really nice tree lined median in the center of the road. Um, so that could be an option. And then going further south, I mentioned basically the entire Parmenter corridor, which the original public art master plan had deemed that as the spine of public art through the city where you should, the city could should consider focusing artwork. Um, also the areas west of there, including the new aviary development. Um, mm -hmm. And then further to the south, Conservancy Bend, the entire Creek corridor, portions of the high school property and then following the Creek Corridor um, to the entrance to the Pheasant Branch Conservancy, several, the, the entrance at the kind of the main, what I consider the main entrance north of Century Avenue when you do the, the whole loop area, that part is included in the TIP district. And then um, also some parts of the historic Pheasant Branch area, which is where the Stam House is located. It's the oldest commercial building in Dane County. And then heading east um, to the corner of Allen Boulevard and Century Avenue, we have included um, 
the Middleton Springs shopping area, harbor wellness area. There are some public owned conservancy lands located here. Uh, a portion of Lakeview Park is included um, as well as the cemetery. And then down to the intersection of University Avenue and um, branch near where the Walgreens is, and then a few of the properties in that area as well. So we've got a wide area to work with. Yeah. Doing something at Lakeview would be cool too. Yeah. Um, Abby, thing. random question from a conversation that came up, but I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but we as a committee decide what to do with those funds. It has no, like the businesses receiving the funds have no input, right? Right, yes. The committee, um, it's just an, a line item in our budget. It's not tied to any specific development project. So no developers that are building projects within TIP District 5 would have any say in what goes in. Um, the committee does advise the council because we are gonna need to um, enter into an agreement. Um, there would be future ongoing maintenance costs. So it's not a decision that stays solely within the arts committee because the committee is always advisory to the common council. Um, but I would anticipate that the council would take you know, any recommendations that the committee has. I would okay. make it so. <laughs> and um, Jolene has her hand raised. Yes, sorry. Um, I was just looking at the map and trying to see on the um, sort of along Middleton Shores or whatever, is that um, the soccer fields included in that, in there as um, well? On along Allen Boulevard, you mean? Yeah. Um, so this is the area that has been used as a soccer field. It's just okay. outside of the TIP district. Okay. But yeah, but it's not it's not a permanent soccer field. That's just land that somebody has owned and hasn't developed. And so they've been allowing it to be used for ah, soccer. Okay, okay. And then when you were up up north, um, the the Middleton Ridge, um, Misty Valley or whatever, is that part of it or is that just a city boundary? Um uh, it's like it was immediately adjacent to Bell Farms to the yeah. east. Um Misty Valley neighborhood is not included in the tip district. Okay. Got it. Just checking. So I know we well, I live in on that in that area, and I know we have like a, a median and unfinished median on Bell Farms, or excuse me, on Bell Fontaine. Yes. That, that needs help from a from a you know, just from a planning perspective. But okay, thank you. Yes. Abby. Yeah. Since you mentioned the boulevard, um, before we even get generating ideas, is there potential rejection from DOT? I'm just thinking back to the whole roundabout mm -hmm. sculpture issue. That It's a very good question, Erin, because um, another project that I'm working on right now or another item that I'm researching and I'm working with the Bell Farm developers on is that they, the DOT reviewed their preliminary plat and came back with some comments that indicated that the DOT felt that they still had jurisdictional control over a portion of Parmenter Street, which used to be the Beltline. But when the Beltline was moved off of the Parmenter Street corridor, they signed an agreement with the city saying that they, I mean, I'm really boiling this down, but they basically signed an agreement with the city saying that they relinquished the control of that area. But they are raising concerns right now and we're working with them to try to determine whether they have any jurisdictional control over Parmenter. Um, so it's possible, depending on the outcome of that other conversation, it's possible that they could raise concerns about a sculpture in the median. Okay. Katie has her hand up. Thanks. I, I'm wondering about the area. I'm terrible about north and south. Uh, the, the entrance to the Pheasant Branch Conservancy that is um, where the new parking lot and new yes. shelter are, I think they're going to be built. Yeah. That may be an amazing place. For a piece of art mm -hmm. 
it would be a great location. I could not agree with you more, especially given that it's, you know, that is the most historic part of the city. Um, we just implement recently implemented design guidelines for any new projects that are constructed in that area. And we're eventually planning to when the county and the city reconstruct the bridge, the Century Avenue bridge, we're planning to underground the trail there. And so if you're heading north along the creek corridor, you would go under Century Avenue and then you would come out at a new trailhead. Um, that's now that project, you know, we were hoping to get it done really quickly. I know our mayor was really excited about the project and wanted us to get it started really quickly. They have kind of put the brakes on it a little and they're saying, well, because of this type of funding that we're getting, it's going to be a few more years than we had thought. So it's not happening immediately, but that would be a great location. Do you think it would be good for us just to reach out to the friends and start a conversation right now? Wouldn't hurt. Okay. Um, sorry, one, one more question. If what is the timeline on, you know, like, does the money have to be used in 2023? And then, um, you know, does the, do the TIF districts rotate and like the logistics? Of That's that a great question. Yep. So the funding is allocated in the 2023 city budget, but um, you, if you decided that you would prefer to do a $60,000 project in 2024, or even a $90,000 project that you wanted to start planning for now in 2025, you could request a capital carryover. We're actually in the process of, I sent my capital carryovers in today for last budget year. So that's where you know the funding is allocated in a calendar year, but if it's a, a capital funded project, you can generally just carry those funds forward. Okay. If it's an operating budget fund, which we also receive um, about $5,000 in operating funds from th through the city budget, that cannot be carried forward. So it, as of December 31st of last year, any remaining funds would then be absorbed into the general fund and the arts committee wouldn't have control of those anymore. Okay, thank you so much. And then maybe perhaps offline, someone can catch me up on the on the logistics of you know just the committee as a whole, because um, I don't I don't want to delay everybody with all my new questions. It. Okay, yeah, cool. just let me know um, what times work for you, and we can meet. Perfect. Thanks. So, so I guess course of do we need a course of action for this, or just this more is just it? informational, isn't it, Abby? Um, yeah, unless you have any projects that you wanted to start thinking about, or if you want to take some more time, um, totally up to you. I think it makes sense for us to first identify some locations. So um, even if you're out driving, maybe we can discuss this again next month and talk about locations that we saw. Um, and then I can, I'm happy to reach out to the Friends of Pheasant Branch and just see if they'd even consider working with us because if they won't, then I guess we could cross that off of our list. <laughs> I'm sure they would be, right? One more question. Um, okay, so when we, when y'all think of a, a project, you know, so if we're scouting locations, do you also, is there like a theme or is it kind of just open? You know, like, could it, I don't know, social justice or, you know, maybe more steam or, you know, like something to do with, I don't, I, do we have a direction or a theme or, or, or something that, that guides us? We usually, uh, for a project, we'll generate ideas if it's something that we're starting fresh with and then we'll like, people will come back with their ideas, um, kind of like, you know, scouting out a location, people okay. can give their input after giving it some thought but no I mean we don't have a specific direction we're following we do have some projects on our master plan that you know we can look at too um, for something you know we might want to put in um, but no we kind of just um, brainstorm and then come back together and and discuss that's so cool thank you <laughs> Sounds it sounds like um anyway really neat um do is are there um 
regular like um, citizen feedback? Are there, you know, is there, are there feedback sessions or is it primarily just this committee? I'd say it's mostly just this committee. Um, we struggle to find volunteers and to work with um, the community you know, on a larger scale. So we have started doing more public events. We've been doing kids art classes and um, of course the art walk. So it's primarily this committee and then we will have subcommittees um, from our committee that will work on specific projects. You know, speaking of art walk, that might be a good, if we're looking for public feedback, that might be a really good forum to throw up, you know, have a little charrette and gather some public feedback, you know, with whatever ideas we come up with here. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Or put it on our website and do like a poll. Yeah. Yep. Um, last question I have on this subject, Abby, did the area of Pheasant Branch, did that, I can't, I can never tell from those overlays on the map, but did that include the whole water tower area? No, I'm still hanging on Sebastian's idea here. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love that idea too. No, um, it only includes like the portion of the Creek corridor with the trail that is paved. So it's between Century Avenue and then, I mean, a little bit at the entryway but mostly it's Century Avenue south to um, south and then west to Parmenter Street. Okay, got it. That would be a great use for it though, for Sebastian's water tower idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if, if it would need, a, if we only get, if we get $30,000 this year and we can carry it over, it would still take probably like three, four years to even save up the funds to do that. But I would be so excited to help run that project. But it or just, some it, fundraisers. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, there, there might be community members, people who use the park who might see that as a really good opportunity or a really nice uh nice projects and we might get more community support from that but i think it remains to be seen we could do some kind of survey i feel like surveys are always good for this kind of thing like thinking about what people actually want what they'd like to see maybe making people aware that uh there's more arts funding in middleton now and we do want to know from the community how they'd like to use it so and are we, we allowed to do another funding sorry just real like, are we allowed say, to accept um, like corporate or get corporate funding for any of these projects or does it doesn't matter where the money comes from? We can get donations. We're not prohibit prohibited from doing that. Okay, cool. I was just looking at the boundary of the TIP district and it might be possible that we could actually add the property in that has the water tower because these properties are all tax exempt. So if we were to amend TIF District 5, which we're talking about doing, possibly we have a work session on it on February 6th. Um, if we were going to amend it, there would be no downside to the city adding in these properties because they're tax exempt anyway, so they don't have any assessed valuation associated with them. So it's possible we could actually amend it and include the property with the water tower. Hmm. Well, it couldn't hurt for future reference and you know the hope is of course that we're going to continue to get a large amount of TIF funding and hopefully it will go up um, from year to year so that remains to be seen though and it's capped at 50,000 right Abby no it's not capped it's um it's just based on so the way that we kind of proposed calculating it is we take the TIF incentives that were provided to private developers to do projects. And then we look at those on an annual basis and calculate the average of the last three years. And um, the average of that happened to be $30,000, which is why we're, um, which is why we have $30,000 for this year. Um, now we are negotiating with the Bruce Company project right now for a TIF incentive, and that probably will be a larger amount um, because that's a really big project. It's 
800 units of housing and it's a major redevelopment project. So that's another bigger one that could increase the, the average. All right, any other questions or comments about the funding options? <clears throat> Oh, I have right. just one last question. Uh, have we a, a good updated list of artists that would want to be involved? Great question. We I would not call it updated because I just <laughs> used it to distribute the art walk artist application form and I got like a hundred bounce backs or something uh, from emails that didn't exist anymore. So I got this um, this list that I use from the Wisconsin Arts Board like 10 years ago. Um, and then I've continued to just update it through information that we have when we like learn about an artist or through also through the AIM database of local artists. I've just continued to update it as I have time basically. <laughs> so we were doing I don't super up to date. <laughs> Abby, would you like me to update that? Because I just shotgunned like the whole application today out to everyone I spoke to with Wisconsin Arts and Craft Alliance. It puts um, on the well, it, ha it has like twelve hundred artists listed, so I'm not sure if you want to take it on, Aaron. But actually, Seb the company that Sebastian works for, they probably have a good way to disseminate <laughs> information if we wanted to sign up for that. Yeah, I guess it would depend on what your criteria is for artists whether how you would want to limit it i know we have a list of wisconsin artists if we want to limit it just to wisconsin artists if we want to do wisconsin like local to dane county we could i could figure that out too but it really just depends on what the criteria is and like what um like schedule and when you'd want to announce it and reach out uh for that but i yeah we'd, we'd be happy to do something like that especially for someone local to us all right well since this is not an action item shall we move on to our capital budget for next year yes and i included this because so, um you all asked me i think at our december meeting to start um, you wanted us to have this item on the budget or on the agenda so that when the budget requests for 2024 roll around, which usually happens in July, we start our city's budget process, that you would be ready to go with a project if, if there was something that you wanted to request additional capital funding beyond the half percent. Okay. Any comments on that? Um, Abby, we did not do a capital budget request this past year, correct? That's correct. And what were we going, what was it going to be again? It was the refurbishment of the Middleton sign oh, in yeah, storage. Yeah. We kind of, yeah, we talked about it quite a bit and then the committee wasn't really quite ready to request the money because a lot of you found out about the condition of the letters and decided to pull it. Yeah. Do we so want to put that up for reconsideration at all? Sign Art had asked me about it. We just happened, they happened to be in our office okay, I three do, weeks ago. I do think we need to do something with those letters because they can't sit there forever, but it might need to be another brainstorm session of options of what to do with it. Yeah, that might be a project for um, Lakeview. Ooh, I could see that. Um, there's a lot of space there. Mm -hmm. And it's a high traffic area. Yeah. So I guess for the people who weren't here, one of our main concerns with it is it was going to be above the skate park. And we had a meeting with a sign fabricator and... They were saying that we needed to clean, like we had to have all these things. We had to clean it, it has to be repainted, it has to be rewrapped, like all this stuff. And it's like, okay, it's gonna be up on this really steep hill. How are we going to do that? So um, I think the thought is, I think there's a lot of things we could think about with this, the letters. We could, um, somebody suggested lighting it. If we lit it, 
they probably could still have it on that hill because I don't think it would need the maintenance. Well, backing up a little bit, we should explain what letters we're talking about. So the letters say Middleton, and they are the old ones that were on Middleton Center before they replaced it, before the new buildings were built. So with these letters are metal, and they're in pretty, some of them are in pretty bad condition. Um, and so we um, have been trying to figure out how to purpose them because the budget was far greater than what we had anticipated to put them up by the skate park. So that's kind of catching everybody up on what letters we're talking about. Yeah, it was what it was 40 grand, right? Or 50 maybe. No, I mean the total, yes, was that, but there were so many optional things in there that we could easily pull out. I will point out that if we were to light it, it like doubled or tripled the cost. Okay. And they did not recommend lighting it as people who have professionally do this just with the material they're made out of yeah and then you have to get like electrical up into like the ground and stuff yeah I do think it would be really cool if there was like a different letter for each artist kind of like the cows or the bucky badger statues where you know what if, call for artists, each one. What if we enlisted ETC for help or ETS for help uh ETC does do quarterly grants of up to I want to say fifty thousand dollars for things like this. Can we apply for a grant though? If we're not a 501c3. Hmm. Mm. I'm, I'm not recalling the budget um, or the estimate they gave for that, but I thought there was a big part of expense to for the maintenance because it was on the uphill. But if now if you're thinking about a different location, maybe the whole numbers have to be. Like, yeah, they I, wouldn't. I, I can't remember the total estimate. It was, was it 40 or? It was around 40, but there was a lot of different options you could pull out because I remember them saying, don't, you know, freak out at the number when they sent it to me. Um, I think the but you're correct. Was... A big part of it was like the foundation and how deep it needed to go to be able to hold it, you know, obviously for erosion control, Wisconsin weather, all of that stuff. So if it was on a flat surface, I would imagine that those that part would be considerably less. Well, wasn't there also concern that we were, would go over budget and then we would not be able to pay for it or would not be able to handle the continued maintenance cost? Yeah, Meg brought up the maintenance cost because that wasn't included in sign arts because it completely, without us deciding what the call for artists were, there was no way to determine exactly, you know, how often it needed to be maintained. If we had someone go up there and paint it, it would probably need to be touched up every two or three years, I believe it was. But if we did the appropriate wrapping, then it was like eight to 10 years. There are all kinds of variables as far as that went. Do you guys want to think about a different location or a different purpose for the letters as a capital project? Does, does anyone have a picture of these letters anywhere? Yeah, my Abby, do you have the rendering handy that my company did um or I should say I Steve just need did. to get on the VPN so that I can oh. get to my work computer to look it up because it's on our oh here computer. I can probably pull it up way quicker yeah you might be able to find it in your email quicker <laughs> Jolene we think of them as kind of a smaller version of the Hollywood letters that's kind of what I was thinking I'm like are we talking Hollywood sign here um yeah, yeah that's so cool and um, they're hollow on the inside like they're three-sided and then they had a cover over them Okay. And yeah, then, they had been lit been, right. when they were up on top of the building, right okay. near the Middleton Post Office. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? I think I, did they just, just come down recently then? Is that, is that? No, those are new ones they put mm -hmm. up. It used to oh, say okay, like okay, okay. Middleton yeah. Center. Yeah. So. Well, I'm just thinking of all like the sort of the, the press that like the, the liquor, restored liquor sign on State Street is getting, you know, just that went up in the last couple of weeks and it's the neon sign and it, it looks really neat and then of course you have the orpheum sign you know that, that state street vibe i'm just thinking that if you know you get enough of a story around making this happen uh, a middleton sign you know a landmark of our own i think it'd probably be pretty easy to get enough money raised you know if we decided we wanted if it's important to us as a group i mean i i we're definitely, you know, we're in that growth phase as a community. And, and, and so just sort of adds to the Middleton mystique, if you will. Um, 
So I don't know, it kind of gets me excited personally, just a little, a little bit of town branding. <laughs> For sure. It'll be a great selfie station. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah probably like in Mexico, sure. you know, those big <laughs> signs that have the city name. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. I'm thinking, well, Long mm -hmm. Beach Airport. There's one uh, one like there's a really cool one in Dubai. Um randomly, you know, it's like at at what pedestrian level, but they don't have winter. So Mm. Well, we want to be like Dubai. Yeah. Well, it's really cool. Um, <laughs> definitely. I mean, or what is it? The L O V E in Philadelphia or wherever it is, wherever you see those signs. Yeah. Like, kind of cool. I found the proposal easy enough. That's it's 36,000 with all options, um, which we definitely didn't need all of their options. The most expensive was the preparation for if. We were to have someone paint it, um, which I don't know. I personally, even as a painter, <laughs> I personally think that that just for the maintenance wouldn't be the best way to go about. But should we put this on our agenda for next month? Yeah, why don't we do that, and then I can pull up. Yeah, I can find the renderings in the meantime, and then we can get everybody kind of caught up on the same page. Is there ever an opportunity to collaborate with like the tourism division or the chamber of commerce? Like this is the kind of thing that would, you know, maybe be good enough for, or, you know, be beneficial to more than our department. Yeah, um, we work with the CDA also um, okay. and downtown Middleton Business Association and whoever wants to work with us pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So, well, if, if, you know, if, if everyone has their plates full and I'm just jumping in, I'm happy to, if you want somebody to start contacting people and knocking on doors, uh, I'll do that. Awesome. That'd be great. Okay. Maybe there should be like a group of, um, I don't know, a few people who meet like about the sign before the next meeting, just, just to kind of brainstorm next steps. A subcommittee. I can do that. Awesome. I'm happy to join in whoever wants to do it. See? Oh, look at your team. Who would like to do it? We usually try to have three on a subcommittee. Um, yeah, I can help out since I pulled the whole quote and everything together. Okay, so we've got Jolene and Meg and Erin. Um, so back to the, um, the thing on the agenda though. Do you think that we need to do a 2024 capital budget request if we're getting the half percent for arts or would we just allocate the half percent for arts? for the Middleton sign instead. I think they should be separate. Okay. Yeah, you could do that or you could do either. Okay. So as long as we have it prepared by, what'd you say, August, July? July, July is when we start working on it. Um, if the committee is going to submit it, it probably would end up getting approved either at your July meeting or your August meeting at the latest. Okay. We, I know this year or last year, our deadline was, I think, August 19th. Okay. Yeah, I think for the fact that we struggle to meet once a month, it's best to get going on it if we're going to have, you know, all the quotes, all the information to actually submit anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Well, the other thing oh. is, um, per Jolene's thought about requesting funding from tourism is that um, if we decided to request that they partner with us, so let's say it's a $40,000 project and we're going to get 20 from capital and we are going to request 20 from tourism, that would probably need to happen even earlier because they're going to be approving their budget uh, around the time that we're submitting to the council. So I just think like generally speaking, speaking like the sooner the better if we're ready this spring with like a really good solid plan and we've met with the tourism director um that would be the best way to go i would say i told um mari olson about this we were talking over gallery night which would be back in may kind of when we were really starting on the whole middleton sign thing and i mean she thought it was a fabulous idea so i'm sure they would be game for it Tourism um, is very supportive of the Arts Committee. Awesome. Yeah. I guess before I get too eager, you know, on, on one thing, I, I just also um, 
So I, I get eager about everything. So um, Jolene, we love volunteers around yes, here. So thanks for joining. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get me and then all, all like the 10 fr friends I'll, I'll, I'll strong arm. No, um, <laughs> but uh, I guess it's more or less like, does this distract from other like longer term, you know, Right. Like if we're looking to do other collaborations, like, is this what, like, has this, is this a kind of an exciting or a big focus item for the committee? Because I don't want to drive something that will take away from other uh, endeavors that we're trying to do right now. Um, but I, you know. Well, we get a capital that. project each year. So okay. we request a capital project each year. That's just, it can be anywhere in the city, pretty much. Um, so oh. We passed it up last time just because we didn't, you know, because of the concerns we, that we voiced about the sign being on the hill. Um, but we can ask for money every year for a different project. Or if we have one, like we are right now um, working on wrapping the um, bus stops, that if we wanted to ask for that for a second round of those, which that was our capital project two years ago and it got rolled over. So if we wanted to do a two-part, for example, project, we could do that two years in a row through the capital budget. Okay. Yeah. Did that answer the question? Yes, yes it okay. did. Thank you very much. Okay. So, all right, great. So we have a subcommittee for the capital budget. Um, we don't need to vote on anything, do we, Abby? No. So shall we then um, expect you all to come back next month with some info and move on to art scholarships. All right, well, it's art scholarship time again. Um, I just got a message and Abby, I don't know, did you get the correspondence that they sent via snail mail? She asked me about the address, I think for the application maybe to send to you. Um, I don't think I got that, no. How how long ago did she mail it? Oh, it was like a week ago that she messaged me, and I don't. Oh. Um, she asked me if that was the correct address, so I don't know if she had actually mailed anything out or not at that point. Um, okay. But she had the correct address for City Hall, and I told her where it should go. Um, okay. When I get it, I'll scan it and then I'll email it to you, so you'll uh, know that I have it. But I ha I haven't seen it in the box yet. Okay. So last year we gave um, two art scholarships to graduating seniors. They were $500 a piece and they came out, uh, that money came out of our general budget. And so essentially I'm here to ask you all if you want to do that once again this year. Uh, I should also mention we did get an increase in our general budget from 5,000 to 25 or 7,500. So we do have an additional $2,500 that we're working with this year. Um, so I guess what I'm asking for tonight is for you to either approve or deny um, the scholarships. And we gave one to a graphic designer and was it a musician? I can't remember last year. So it encompasses all the arts. It's not just visual or, um, and it could be uh, literature even if someone wanted to apply. But anyway, that is kind of where we're at with that. Michelle, is it um, still two that we're thinking? That's what I was thinking of still doing two $500 mm -hmm. ones. Okay, um, I will move that we approve these scholarships for this year. I'll second that. All in favor? Oh, do we need to have discussion? Yeah, well, I mean, like, should we increase since we have more money? I mean, what do we need? We need the 750 for Aaron. Mm -hmm. What, like $2,500 for the art walk? Yeah. And then we're, we have nothing else, right? Is there anything else? Unless something comes down the pike later in the year, like, you know, something like the Love Your Neighbor mural or some other project that we need to dedicate money to. Is the art fair not an, another year then? I think Sorry. that came up last time. The, the art, art walk? Uh, I thought there was talk of an art fair. That's the art walk. Oh. Um, you had a, I, I was just looking on YouTube and you, you had a, um, 
um, um, event planner. Um, yeah. Oh, that is there. Okay. Yeah, they're one in the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do we have to pay for an event planner for that? Pardon? Do we have to pay for the event planner for the art walk? Not this year. We voted against doing. She it. called me yesterday. That, yeah, I can. We okay. can put that on the next month's agenda. Yeah. Um, but I could see increasing it to like a thousand dollars a piece, since we have more fun, you know, and we're going to have this half percent for arts and all these other things. I feel like doing two thousand dollars <laughs> scholarships is. I would also like to increase the maybe the art walk fund from three thousand or twenty five hundred to three thousand this year, um, since yeah. we. Okay. Let me do some really quick math. So seventy five hundred minus three thousand. So we're at forty five, and then we need Aaron needs seven fifty. How much do you need for the um, youth center? How much youth did you center? Need youth center this year we spent around a thousand twelve hundred. We had the money from Triangular Door. That's where that came from last year. So we should probably budget some of that for youth center because we won't have. But we also, if we're not having triangular door at Art Walk, then we're also not paying out the money to him. To the <laughs> so it's kind of a wash. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just estimate that at five hundred for the youth center. That leaves us thirty two fifty. So if you're saying yeah. two thousand, we'd still have twelve hundred and fifty dollars extra. And we'll likely need more money for the youth center than $500, but um, we may, you know, once we get donation or donor box up, we may start getting money in through that as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm okay with doing $2,000 ones or even two seven fifties, whatever you guys want to do. Mm, yeah, that's a good idea. Meet in the middle. Is it possible to just allocate a sum and then determine, you know, maybe if you want to have four scholarships, for, you know, that are 500 versus two that are 1000, you know, just kind of um, well, make that decision down the line or we need to decide because they're starting to send these applications out oh, to the kids. I so, see. <laughs> yeah. Right. We, and the uh, reason we settled on two, I believe, last time because it was originally one if I remember correctly. And we just settled on two just to give more opportunity, but we just settled on no more than that because honestly, God, it's gotta be like what, six, 750 for books per semester now. Like you yeah. wanted you know, it to actually mean something for the kids, so. Got it. Yes, my niece just had sticker shock in her first purchasing of books a couple oh. of weeks ago. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm okay with whatever you guys want to do, whatever amounts you guys see fit. Um, and then I will um, change the amount on the um, application form that they fill out. Do I need to change my motion? You, because we have a motion on the floor. Because we, yeah, because we're changing. Yeah, amend it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I will amend my motion, um, and I will move that we put forth, what do we think, the 750s or the 1000s? Meg, you're the one doing math. <laughs> I mean, I think we can afford to do either. If 750 makes everyone more comfortable, then... I think a thousand sounds nice. You know, if you're that student and you're you're putting in all the effort to apply for the scholarship, yeah. If, if we can afford it as a committee, yeah, I think we can afford it with these other opportunities that have kind of come up with the half percent and everything. All right. So my motion is, um, I move that we put forward two one thousand dollar art scholarships for this year. I'll second. I'll second. Yep, Jolene seconded it. Jolene seconded, yeah. So we have Katie and Jolene. Yes. All right. All in favor of two one thousand dollars scholarships. Aye. 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 I am sure they're going to be super excited to hear that we have doubled the the scholarships this year. And uh, 
the students that received the $500 ones last year were very grateful. So, yay. All right. Pop up art is next on our agenda. Pop up art. Um, so I did not get a chance to meet with Kylie last month because I had um, I had surgery and I did not recover as quickly as I wanted to. <laughs> so um, I'm meeting with her on Monday, but I did kind of email back and forth with Kylie and um, let's see, pull up here. So I went ahead and I committed to just knowing schedules, volunteers, you know, staffing is kind of an issue when it comes to these. I committed to what I knew I could when talking with Greg. Let me just pull that up here. Um, and Jolene, just for a little background on this. So we started doing these probably, I think, right after I joined the committee, right, Abby? Yep. When yep. Stonehorse Green, before the construction started as kind of a um, compliment to the music and the Thursday night things that were going on in the summer there so that, you know, parents could enjoy music and kids could come over and do arts and crafts. And then the library did some stuff, too. And we received a lot of positive response from it. So um, when school's out or there's gaps in like the rec programs with the high schoolers returning that usually staff them, we started hosting these little pop-up events. Um, we collaborate with Parks and Rec quite often because especially in the winter, well, it's Wisconsin, so let's be realistic. Half the year when it's too cold <laughs> for them to be outside, we have the shelter available at Lakeview or other areas. Um, a lot of times it aligns with these little holiday events like this year with the Santa Parade, um, candy cane hunt, things like that. So we're just looking ahead for this next year. Um, we need to have finalized dates to them for summer by March 1st when they go to print for the catalog. Um, so we can finalize it. I know the Middleton School District just approved their calendar, I wanna say like five days ago. So I'm gonna need to look at that and we can make that March 1st deadline at our next meeting. But what I committed to so far is March 13th. April 17th and May 15th, which are out of school days for Middleton Cross Plains. Um, I figured March could align with, you know, an Easter theme, April with kind of the whole May Day, you know, type of baskets. And um, May 15th could be something of, you know, schools out for summer, things like that. And then I have the weeks of August. 14th and 21st flagged, that's usually the two weeks um, when all of the recreational programming stops and there's not much for kids to do because all the like sports practices return for the high school. Um, but I saw obviously with the calendar dropping that for the first time, at least as long as my kids have been in school here, they decided not to start school until after Labor Day this year. So I'm thinking that that's gonna get moved back to be August 21st and 28th. I'm usually doing uh, two things those two weeks, so four total days. So those are the dates I know for sure for now. Um, I would love volunteers and help. Uh, doesn't need to be, you know, if someone wants to lead them as far as creating stuff, I would be happy to, um, you know, hand that over or take turns. If someone just wants to come help uh, do crowd control, that's really helpful too. Um, I do also hope that we will have something larger in the summer um, as far as getting my volunteers from like my company involved to cater to the older kids, um, middle school, maybe even high school for um, introduction to architecture. They could get some other cool rendering software, which I wish I knew how to use out and, you know, hand sketching and bring old plans and everything like that. Um, but it's always nice just for like the spread of ages of these families I see coming, you know, to have something very basic for like to occupy the toddlers and preschoolers and kindergartners and then have something a little bit more advanced for the older elementary school kids um, to couple with this. So I ran some basic ballpark numbers with committing to around eight of these this year. And I think 750 should easily 
cover it. So that's what I'm asking the committee for tonight. And then we can cement the rest of the school dates for the um, start of the 23 school year at our next meeting, if that works. All right. So does anyone want to make a motion to approve Aaron's budget for pop-up art? I can make a motion to approve $750 allocated to pop up the pop art art program with Middleton Rec. I'll second. Katie, was that you? Yes, that was me. Sorry. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So then we are on to our next item, which is maintenance. Yeah, so we have two um, pieces right now in our collection that require maintenance. Um, one is the self-made man sculpture that is at the corner of Deming Way and Airport Road in the median. And that's the one that um, was shot and has bullet holes in the sculpture. Um, we, for, for our new member, we had hired an art conservator, Cricket Harbag who was unable to complete the restoration work due to other issues. And then we had a second art conservator under contract who also um, had an injury and was unable to complete the restoration. And so now we are on our third um, conservator and this company is Sculpture Resource out of somewhere in Illinois, the Northern Chicago suburb, right, Michelle? Yeah, Highland Park, I believe. Highland Park. Um, and they, um, so the council has now approved the contract for that work and it has to take place once it warms up a bit. So we're hoping to get a date on the calendar for the spring soon. And then the second piece is the invisible work, Invisible Earth, which is the Dama mural um, that is adhered to the retaining wall that surrounds the salt storage building at the municipal operations center and meg had noticed when she was out visiting it that there are portions of the um the poly tab fabric that the the um, mural is painted on that are bubbling up and so um we reached out to dama that did the work and they said that they had included it in their contract that they would be willing to restore it one time for us at their cost. Um, again, that's also one that has to take place in the spring. So these two items, I'm just keeping them on the agenda. I can give you updates as we go along, but we're um, poised to have both of them done yet this year, assuming <laughs> knock on wood that everything goes well with this, um, with the self <laughs> sculpture in particular. <laughs> Yes, so hopefully that will be done this year. We've been working on a on, uh, self-made man for what, like three or four years trying to get it fixed. Yeah, it's been a saga. <laughs> the good yeah. thing about the self-made man one is that our insurance covered the cost of it. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't something that we had to cover out of like our operating budget or anything like that. Abby, how it, the, Dama mural lasted what, like four years, three? Uh, yeah. We were fundraising, I think, right before the pan. No, we were fundraising during the during. pandemic because I did a Zoom fundraiser. Yep. Yeah, it's not been installed for very long. A couple of years. Yeah. Mm, that's disappointing. Yes, it is. All right. So if we maintain it, we can hope that we get another couple of years. Before it bubbles again. Yeah, we should probably learn about their process to repair it. Um, and yeah, hopefully they, you know, maybe they can give us some advice about why it, it's doing what it's doing and whether there's anything we can be doing to prevent it. Um, I was wondering if it might, if they're already out there doing the restoration work if it might be a good time to have them put a uv coating on it that might be something that we would have to pay extra for but 
if you guys remember, the scaffolding was pretty complicated for that wall because there's a really, the terrain changes a lot and there's a steep drop off after just a few feet of ground there. So we had to get a special kind of scaffolding installed. So I'm just thinking like, you know, if they're already gonna have to install that scaffolding to do their work, would that be the right time to just go ahead and UV coat it to protect it from the sun while they're already out there? Yeah, yeah. I'd say let's go ahead and ask them for a quote on that because what, I mean, we discussed the whole like rental of the scaffolding last meeting, right? And that was considerable? Yeah, we paid, uh, I think, about $3,000 to rent the scaffolding because it was also a, an Illinois company. They came up and installed it for us and then they drove back and then they came back and picked it up. Um, I did clarify with Veronica, who's the executive director of DAMA, that they were intending to pay for the scaffolding and she said that they were. So mm -hmm. the last time we did it, we paid the scaffolding costs. It sounds like they're willing to do that. Um, but yeah, I'll ask her about the UV coating and find out how much more that would cost. All right, shall we then move on to Art Walk? Yep. Well, Aaron and I have been working on Art Walk and trying to get some stuff in place. So I'll just go through the stuff I've been doing. Erin can go through the stuff she's been doing and we'll go from there. Um, so first of all, the music. Um, I think I have everybody chosen. I do not have them picked and time slots assigned. Uh, we are going to need to do three bands this year because we've added an hour to the um, event. And so that gives us additional time to work with. Um, they'll be each be doing two hours with one set break and then, you know, switching out equipment in between. Um, so that is pretty well in place. Uh, I talked to Andrea. She's going to do the artist food again this year at Long Table. I would expect to have a price increase because everything has gone up in price since last year. So I would expect that we're going to probably be paying more for food. Um, I spoke with Peter Lutt, who is a high school art teacher. Last year, they had a display there. Um, this year, they want to have a booth. And so he proposed to me that they would trade us volunteers for booth space. So Aaron and I discussed it and we agreed that uh, we would go ahead with that. The students will go on Sign Up Genius uh, and they will sign up for the time slots that they want. They'll be doing, you know, things like maybe relieving artists so that they can go to the restroom or, um, you know, some of the simpler tasks like running as a gopher, things like that. I don't know how many there will be yet, how many will sign up. Um, we, I just um, updated the sponsor information. Uh, Aaron and I also discussed increasing the amounts on the donor levels, which we did. They're now, 100 to 399, 400 to 799, 800 to 1500, and 15 plus. Um, I sent the information to Erin, who's going to be going out and meeting with people and bringing the information with her. Once that's done, and I have a list of where she's gone, then I will send out donor letters as we did last year. Um, let's see, what else have I got here? Is that it? I've got all sorts of little notes here. So let me make sure I've covered it all. It seems like there was, oh, Rhiannon has signed up for one of the demonstration slots. Um, she is doing uh, a print that people can, can make and take. Um, she has asked for $75 an hour plus supplies, which is in line with our um, demonstrations last year. She wants the committee to think about what you would like it to say to include something about the arts, about the art walk. Um, and then she will cut the image and, you know, put whatever we want on the image. So if you have ideas for that, she's looking for some input. 
um, the basically the supplies she needs are ink and paper. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's pretty basic. So um, I think that's it. Erin, do you want to go with what you're working on? Yeah, we were going to reach out to the, the glass blowers too for demo, right? I thought you were doing the demos, the demo, contacting the demo artists. That was what I wrote down on my notes and food trucks. Yeah, I got food trucks. Okay. I'll reach out to the glass blowers. I can't read my own handwriting here. <laughs> he's, uh, he's really funny. So you're probably going to get him through Facebook. If you go to his okay. Facebook page and message him, because I've emailed him like a million times and he didn't respond to me. Okay. But he would respond to like a Facebook message. So. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for the. The tip there yeah I just love watching that like so personal interest in having them come back I just mesmerized at any of the glass blowing um so yeah. donor letters so I've already talked to a couple just you know by the industry that I work in a couple um different companies that have said that they are excited to donate so I just got back in the country last night so I'm going to hit the pavement with that this week and um, actually get those forms to them and hopefully get a bunch of donations in so that we can start figuring out how much money we have um, total for donations. The largest balancing item I believe with the donations last year was just the cost of the advertising right meg that's where a lot of our costs went so the more we can get for that the more word we can get out and hopefully the larger the event grows and so on um reaching out to the food trucks uh the sweet treats one did fabulous last year and they're more than happy to return um have not gotten word back on the other ones i know the i can't remember the name off the top of my head but the italian one did not do so well and they made such you know a comment to us about that which if you think about the weather that day people walking around when it's really warm probably don't want to be stuffing their face with pasta so <laughs> I actually I, don't know. I thought the pasta guy was really happy with it I think you're thinking of Soho which had like um Asian inspired food oh yeah the oh, really? yeah he said that he probably wouldn't return um okay but I think it was mainly as prices were really high where like the other um, the Mexican food and the pasta was pretty reasonably priced and you got more food for yeah. price. Also, another comment that they had said was that they wish that they were like in the street because I guess some people didn't like actually like go into the brewery area. So if there's room on for them to be like with the artist, maybe one at each end or something like that. That yeah, I think that's something we could consider. Was there, was it a, an electrical thing, Abby, that they had to be? Um, well, <laughs> oh, that's right. So I would need to look at the food truck permitting because my understanding, the last I looked into it, is that they're exempt up from the city's permitting requirements if they're beneath the tap. But mm -hmm. if they're not beneath the tap, then they have to pay for some kind of one-time or annual permit. Could they be beneath the tap on the street side versus the parking lot? No, there wouldn't be a way to do that because they would be like on the sidewalk then. Okay. What if we did a big uh, signage thing where we said, hey, food over here and kind of made it into the food court or whatever? That's a good idea. Yeah, I like that. That's what I was thinking, or maybe use one of our sandwich boards with an arrow pointing people to the food. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. I have two questions for you, Michelle and Aaron. Um, Michelle, are the students going to sell their work at their booth? Yes. Cool. Okay. And then the second is, is the glass blower that you're getting the same one that we had the last time that donated something to the arts committee, the wine, the stretched out like wine glass? Mm -hmm. um, that's in my office still. And I felt like kind of uncomfortable about having that in my office because I'm not allowed. Well, I personally am not allowed to accept gifts, which I know it was a gift to the arts committee and it's housed in my office. But um, I was thinking if you do a silent auction, um, or something like that, maybe you could auction it off as a fundraiser. 
Yeah, I think that's a great idea. My mind was going the same place as far as having, you know, some type of demo artist, just like with Triangulator last year with a piece that we could auction off. And that would be and awesome. It's fun. I think it's fun for people to, to just participate in that way. So mm -hmm. that would be nice. Yeah. Uh, was it Aaron? Wasn't it you, Aaron, who said that some of the other art shows ask artists for like donations to auction off? Yeah. So at um, I do both. Well, I haven't done the summer one in the last well since the pandemic. But for the off the square for summer and winter, the Wisconsin Arts and Crafts Alliance puts that on, and they always ask for both. Um, you know, auction pieces. And then they also um, separately ask, which I think is cool for a young collectors corner so that there's smaller pieces for, you know, like youth that are coming there to buy. That's more, you know, whatever they got in their allowance, you know, five, $10 price points. Um, so I think it would be really cool to yeah, do either one of those, if not both, depending on the space we have. Um, but yeah, I always donate something just because it goes to a good cause. And, you know, from all the feedback we had last year, people really like the event. So I would think we'd have good luck with that, too. So is that something that you do after, like, you have accepted the artist, then you would just email them and see if they'd be willing to donate something for an auction? So it's usually on the application um, where it's a box to check of if you are willing to participate in either one of them. Um, I don't think, since the application's already out there, I don't think that it has to be. I think it's something that we could send a follow-up one as we, because we're collecting money after accepted, correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. I, I specifically told them, don't send me checks this time until you're accepted, because it was awkward last time having to return checks yeah. for people who weren't accepted. Mm -hmm. So I think we could scramble and just pull together a form since we just got the first round of applications in that we still need to approve um, that we could send out with that. I think that's a great idea. The other thing that would be nice is if you do intend to use those funds to support the youth center project, what would be really cool is if we had time to like put together a little brochure or something with some images and some information about the youth center work that was done this year and explain that that's what the silent auction would support. That's a good idea. We could also, um, we could also just send like a, you know, like a one page email with the application. Maybe we could also like, maybe we could just have a follow up email. We could also include, you know, what do you want for lunch? You know, some of the other things that we follow up with them. Um, I should mention also, Aaron and I decided we will not be allowing anyone to borrow tables and chairs from the city. It was a big hassle last year. Um, so I or think tents, no tents either. <laughs> they have to yeah, bring their own stuff. That's right. Yeah. So pretty much everybody needs to bring their own stuff. Yeah. And I think it will go over well this year now that it's a little more, well, a lot more established, right? We got a lot of um, word of mouth and everything here. I think that we had just a lot of people, I believe last year was more the people that were just starting out and had never done a show before that were looking for that type of Hi. set it all up for me. Hi. We, um, <laughs> um and Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say the other thing that I want to mention is that I did get a press release ready and I sent it out to a whole bunch of print publications and some of the news stations. Um, so hopefully um, we will, that will generate some uh, interest. We have 13 applicants so far, which is pretty good because the application just went live a couple of weeks ago. So yeah. we're... Um, and then the other thing I did was I, um, like I said, I just got back in the country last night. So I just um, took that link and sent it to everyone that I had um, talked to at the last art show um, at Monona Terrace in November. And that's, I think, 88 different artists that most are not on our aim list. So um, hopefully that brings in a lot more applications too. And yeah, that is 
where we're at. Um, Jolene, I was going to mention to you that this committee was three people last year. Uh, um, Meg did a ton of the work, so she gets a little break this year. But if you are, um, I think, uh, per your own words, interested in you know knocking on doors and jumping in, we would love assistance from anyone else with especially with the donation letters and getting out there so absolutely I actually um I volunteered for the chamber for the SIP sample socialize the, the the final one before COVID and so have a little bit of small a very small <laughs> like a uh, bit of experience in this space so yeah sign me up Okay, awesome. Yeah, that's a good point to pull from that list because I, I was on the restaurant committee for SIP, San SIP Sample Socialize last year, and that's mm -hmm. a really great list. So um, yeah, okay, we will wrap you in um, then with our next meeting. We're just Zooming, and I guess that's the final update is that Michelle and I are meeting with Matt to next Thursday, right? The second? The second, yeah, at 11.30. Yeah. 11:30. yeah. <laughs> So um, I'll just contact you offline and we'll get you wrapped into this. Thank you That's for great. being willing. Of course. All right. Do you have, I don't have anything else about Art Walk. Do you guys have questions or comments or anybody want to join and help with one of the projects? Like maybe organizing a silent auction and working on that or um Anybody who wants to jump in and um, join the meeting is welcome. So long as we don't have a quorum. All right, well then let's just go ahead and move on to the next item. Mm, sorry, one other thing I was gonna mention is this conflicts with my work. We went to go plan our, um, we design breweries and distilleries. So I found out that this Distill America event is on the exact same day. And that's at um, Breeze Stevens Field. I don't wanna put a dark cloud over it. I think that we're looking at different crowds there, but just wanted to mention it because we had cross-referenced events in the area. Jolene, for your information last year, we had scheduled it the same weekend as UW graduation. So we were trying to <laughs> get away from any type of overlap, but I think that different sides of town, I don't think it should be a big issue and it's honestly doesn't start until like two in the afternoon so anyone that truly wants to go to both should be able to but just wanted to put that one out there we should mention that we had a pretty good turnout the last year for having changed the format and uh you know it was kind of like starting the festival over um and the artists were really happy um they sold a lot of art um you know the musicians were happy Pretty much everybody was happy at the end of the day, um, which is a really gigantic feat, I think. Um, but anyway, um, yes, so May 20th, and we're going to have a conflict no matter what, and I think. Just a to total side note, random, random side note, if you throw the word market in the title of your event, probably get a lot of people to come, you know, just because, you know, like night market and maker's market, you know, and all, all of those things. Um, I mean, just, just throwing that at Yeah. I don't think that we're at this point wanting to change the name. Oh, um, right. Sorry. In like the marketing or, you know, like in what, like in a descriptor, sorry, not the title. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think there was a little bit of confusion about that because it's an it was, you know, called art walk. And so I think I heard from some people that they didn't realize that people were selling art. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah, maybe I'm slightly uh, confused by it without I'll dig in more on it. But I, I was imagining like, you know, how you, uh, what is it that there was like a sip and shop and, you know, where. You, yeah, you know. Jolene, you're so like gallery night, which. I participated in for Middleton, you know, is set up like that. And that's how this initially started where businesses okay. host the artists. So that's yeah. why it was called Art Walk. And we just flipped it into the festival format. So I think that's why you are confused as far as Art Walk, Art Fair. Yep. So. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yes. I am very confused. Okay. I'll get, I'll get up. <laughs> We're a confusing group. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm in the right place. <laughs> um, All right. Any add... other Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Michelle. I just wanted to say from um, the last time I remember some of the artists um, 
had this feedback about having it today because some of them have come from far off and not necessarily from Middleton and Madison. So they coming with their artwork and wanting more days just attracted more audience. And that would also kind of, and I mean, it will add more work, but I, the, what I was trying to think is, um, would that give more people an opportunity to come? Well, possibly, but we're definitely too late for this year, um, you know, because we are, we've already been advertising it as a one day event. Um, so as we grow, that would might be a possibility or could be a possibility, but I feel like we're kind of in our infancy right now. Yeah. It's something we can think about um, just for the group's information. I picked uh, Leslie's brain about this, who is the um, executive director of the Wisconsin Arts and Craft Alliance for all the off the square shows. And the main thing about that is because it's not in a building, like they don't have to deal with it in Monona Terrace, right? Because Monona Terrace already has their own security. But when you put something outside like that, the security costs for monitoring yeah. that and insurance for overnight for all the artists like that, I don't feel like we can, until we are a couple of years established here with donations and, you know, things like that. I don't think that we can risk that type of expense in our budget, but yeah, right, I've, had, like I've a, heard the same comments. Yeah. I mean, if it has to be a multi-day event and for a walk, it has to be responsibility of each artist coming and setting it up again, unless you have an indoor new. Yeah, it's tough. But yeah, we definitely collect all these comments. And as we continue to build um, attendance and donations, I think we can definitely consider it in the future. I, you know, the other thing I think I'm concerned about with having it outside all night is weather. Um, you know, if we got a huge thunderstorm in the middle of the night, would, you know, pieces get destroyed? Um, you know, would tents get knocked over? So, oh, I, Michelle, I can confirm that for you from the 2014 art walk on the river walk in uh, Twin Cities because I was air drying, hair drying like my paintings, and oh my god, it was a mess. Yeah, well, <laughs> the reason I brought this up is because when I was the chair of the Grant Wood Art Festival in Iowa, we had a big thunderstorm. It was in early June. And it literally picked tents up off the ground and slammed them back down. Um, it was a severe thunderstorm that came through. And it was actually the morning of the festival. So, I mean, everybody was getting ready to for the festival to start. And it just, like, wreaked havoc. So, I mean, that can happen anytime. But I think it would be particularly unfortunate for it to happen overnight when we were able to get most of the artists into a building. And... Yeah. Yeah, but I, so that's the risk you take anytime you have something outside, I guess. Yeah, and it is, I will say, I know for insurance requirements, so for the outside shows I participated in, like they legally will not let you set up and participate as an artist for some of these shows, <clears throat> unless you meet the insurance requirements, which I believe was a 75 pound <laughs> bag on each of the four posts of your steel frame tent. Cause I remember my husband like weighing these things. <laughs> so we get whole nother realm if we're gonna go into that territory with insurance costs, requirements and security, so. And we had looked at event insurance just for the day also, and it was pretty pricey. I can't remember how much it was. It was over $2,000, I think for just the time frame that the artists were gonna be there. Yeah. All right, anything else on Art Walk? Okay, so then let's move to Youth Center. The only update I have is that my origami artist for February is not going to be coming. And so Julia has graciously taken over the February slot, which will be the second part of her cartooning class. Um, I did contact Gabrielle so that she could let the kids know that there was a change so that the kids that want to do the second part of the cartooning class will will know that that's coming up this month instead of May. Um, and then we have um, we have a potter in March and April. 
and the I'm looking to fill May now because Julia shifted to February and so now May is open. So if anyone knows anyone who would like to do an art project at the Youth Center or anyone in this group, um, then email me and let me know. Let me... What's the date and time? The date is the first Wednesday in May. I don't know yeah. exactly what date it, what day of the week it, or what and, the date is. And the time frame? It's from four to five. Four to five, got it. And yeah. actually you get there a little bit early to set up but the kids leave right at five. Like they have parents coming and getting them right at five, but you do have a little bit of time to get set up and kind of explain your project beforehand. So you can you can get there and start setting up at like 3.45 or a little earlier. They I think they open the room at 3.30, if I'm not mistaken. There's usually about 10 to 12 kids. I don't know, how many did you have last time, Julia? Um. It was probably about 10. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kids, like, did stay a little past five, but um, I think mostly because like, I think they can technically stay up till six, but it was like, like two kids who would hang out. They had other things to do though. Yeah. <laughs> Is this um, regular, like programming, like the sign up and, and, and such or? No, they don't sign up. So the, the youth center um, has a whole bunch of different things for the kids to do after school. And then they just kind of choose what they want to do. Um, there are cooking classes. There are, um, last year they had like a science one and they made slime and did a bunch of different science projects that resulted in something they could take home. Um, cool. Thank you. They, um. I can't, I don't, I'm willing to help whoever with this. I, I can't teach a painting, I don't think in an hour. I yeah. think we're really pushing it. Um, but this might be a good opportunity to kick off the whole architecture thing. Yeah. And kind of flag kids. So let me get back to you tomorrow after I talk to some of my team and see if I can pull a few people to just do like an intro level course. Well, and kind of, catching you up we the first one Meg did she did um, the kids drew stickers and then she had them professionally cleaned them up on the computer and had them professionally printed and um, then we had uh, Rhiannon did a um, two-part printmaking class and now we have Julia and um, what's the name of the woman who's doing the pottery Meg I can't think of her name um, Chris Laufenberg right right I was just going to say, I obviously could do another sticker class if you need to fill this, the um, space or if, you know, Erin falls, if Erin's not able to do her architect thing. Um, my other I thought would be to do Rhiannon again, because she seemed to really enjoy that. And she's very appreciative because I came in that day to drop the stickers off and she's like, I'm so glad for this opportunity. So, yeah, she's really excited to be at Art Walk, too. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't have a, if she wanted to do another one, I don't have a problem with that. Erin, you, anybody who wants to, to take on the session? They, the question, they, they do, yeah, they're there every day after school, right? So if it was something that needed to dry, for instance, they would be able to pick up yes. after? Okay. Yes, because yeah. when we did the buildings, I just left them there on a shelf every week and then we worked on, or every month, and then I, we worked on them you know, just retrieved them and worked on them. Okay. I they should be able to fill something space. then because my, one of our architectural designers actually used to teach those um, like paint and sip classes. Mm -hmm. And those are always within an hour. So she could do something very, mm -hmm. you know, basic for them to follow along with too. So I'll get back to you tomorrow. I guess right. the one thing I, th I like more about having like Rhiannon or like another artist come in is that they're actually making money. So if, us on the arts committee come in, we don't make any money doing it. And the whole point of the arts committee is to support local arts and yeah. local artists. So it's like, if we can, you still have money in your budget and we can support another local artist, I would, I would prefer that and vote that route. But um, if you're in a bind, obviously one of us could pitch in. Well, I would really like to get, um, you know, and I 
the kids were excited about the origami artist and I'd really like to try to find someone to do that. But um, truthfully, I have had so much else going on. I haven't really been looking yet for a replacement for mm -hmm. me. Um, but yeah, I'm open to suggestions. But that's all okay. I have. On that. Sorry, yeah, are there logistics with background checks for? No. Okay. Um, you know, there have not been like they, um, I guess Gabrielle trusts that the arts committee is going to kind of vet the people that are coming in. So. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming that you're not completely unsupervised or the artist is not completely unsupervised. With There's the a pair of, uh, with the, uh, artist and they are also free to bring in someone to volunteer. Um, you know, so I think, um, some of the classes are a little bit more um, involved, and so they'll bring an additional person with them. Or, um, you know, I to I um, have offered, and other committee members have offered to come in and assist. You know, if they need a volunteer to come and help with the project, so um, it's pretty laid back. It's pretty casual. The kids are in and out. Um, you know, some of them are on the computer, some of them are playing video games, some of them are playing basketball, there's just a, a bunch of stuff going on. But the first Wednesday um, of each month is designated for art. So that's why we have that slot. That's great. Thanks for the info. Yes. Um, well, per Meg's comment, um, I want, do we want to just reach out to Rhiannon? First, then, as far as supporting sure, artists, yeah. and then I can just inquire, you know, as a backup. I can, and I can email her. Um, she did send me some pictures of another event that she had, the uh, an event she had done at Art Walk with the, you know, just having something already cut out and having them print it. But I think uh, I don't know what other things she has in mind. But I will reach out to her and ask her if she wants to do another one. And as Meg said, she was really grateful. She sent me a message about how one of the kids had told her, I don't know if she sent this to all of you guys. Um, one of the kids had told her that he liked art, but he stopped taking art class because he didn't like his teacher. Um, oh. He was having a really good time in her class. And, you know, so I think, um, I think the kids really enjoyed having her there. And so another uh, I'll reach out to see what she says. Another person that potentially for next year, I don't know if you'd be able to do it this year, but another person you should reach out to is Maria because she does oh, it all idea. the time. Well, yeah. actually I did reach out to Maria and she couldn't do it for some reason. She had a, uh, some reason she, because I think she's still doing the thing at the library. Um, and she had actually recommended this girl who was going to do the origami class. In uh, okay. Okay. So that's how I got hooked up with her, but I could reach out to her again and see if she has someone else in mind, because I wanted to do some kind of paper thing. And I immediately thought about the, um, the paper making thing that she did at Art Walk and doing something like that. Um, but uh, there was some reason that she couldn't do it. So, but I could try to reach out to her again. I'll check with Rhiannon first and then I will message Maria. Okay. All right. Anything else about the youth center? Are you excited, Julia? Did you have fun last time? Yeah, it was really nice. Um, there was like one particular kid who was like super enthusiastic about it. And I feel like some kids had like an aha moment on figuring things out, which was really awesome. So um, it's been like a while since I've been like in a teaching setting, like for that specifically. And um, I think my son was there too. And it was like, um, he was uh, so creative, like just doing the stuff. It was really nice. All, like all the kids were super fun to work with. Julia, do you need any help this next time? I think so. I wasn't okay. sure what to expect. So um, it was pretty easy to manage um, just myself there. So thank you. Yeah. Take some pictures. I want to see it. Yeah. Either end results. 
All right, cool. I have some of the some of the kids gave me their artwork from last time, so I'll I'll take a photo of their stuff too. And the pair should be able to tell you if they're not allowed to be in pictures. Okay, I think I you. think all the kids I think all the kids though are able to be in pictures. That's something okay. we could use if we did a brochure or some kind of flyer for a silent auction. That's some some pictures that we could use in that to kind of show the things we okay. do. Yeah, I did take some photos, but I only took pictures of my kin. So I have at least that from the time, but I'll know that for next time. Thank you. All right, awesome. Well, our last item agenda here is the shelter covers, bus shelter covers. Yep. And I I kept this one. I don't I don't really have an update right now on that project. Okay. Do you, um, so we talked about this briefly before Jolene, that it was our capital project and we had initially started out, we were gonna wrap utility boxes, but there was some, some conflict with MG&E and permission. And so um, Abby, and was it Daphne? Came Daphne, up with, yep. Came up with the idea of wrapping the uh, bus stop shelters okay. instead. And so we did a call for artists and then we chose, um, you know, 10. 10, I think. Yeah. And so we will be, and they're in the packet, the ones that we chose. Um, and so that is a project that we are working to get underway. Awesome. And that's all. Does anybody want to move to adjourn? I'm going to move to adjourn so you don't have to hear my screaming kids in the background. <laughs> I'll second. This <Just> Katie. <laughs> all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. It was kind of a long meeting. I appreciate you hanging in there. Thank you. Night, all. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.